if this is on. Is it working? Okay, all right. Um, they're just giving me a, a small opportunity. I'm not going to stand here long because I know we want to get to the singing. And but I just want to just stand here just for a moment and just tell you guys, uh, from my family's heart to your heart, thank you. We've been living uh, some really tough days for over 30 days, and we felt every prayer and every every person that reached out to us uh, through text messaging or call and the concern that you had. And my mom loved this church. <laughs> She loved all you guys, and we wanted uh, somehow, some way, her legacy to continue the way that she prayed and the way that she lived and the way that she praised the Lord, and I hope that some of that will rub off on, on somebody here that can pick up that gauntlet and continue to carry it along the way. I want to thank you all as a church for allowing us to have these grounds last Sunday so we can have my mom's funeral here. And it was a perfect way for my mom to have a last service at a church that she loved. And I tell you what, we asked people in lieu of flowers and blankets and all that stuff, we asked people if they would give in the memory of my mom so that money can go on to be sold into this church to maybe buy remaining things that need to be uh, bought in the sanctuary or the kitchen and we 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 just ask for people to to step up for us and i tell you what we are blown away from the little new newlywed couple that gave twenty dollars which is probably a whole lot to them too we know that some people gave a whole lot of money and I'm here to say that with that love and honor, my mom can continue because they was right at $7,000 and counting that was given to my mom's honor. So I want to say thank you. And if you can't, yeah, just praise the Lord with me. You know, in some weird way, maybe, maybe that $7,000 is just one of the last final pushes to get us into this church. I mean, what a testimony. My mom would love to be able to say, hey, it was worth it all. I helped him to take that last step to get in here. I tell you what, we miss her so much, and I pray that you guys will continue to pray for us. We need your prayers. But I tell you what, we need more than, we, than your prayers. We need you to keep up the good fight. We need you to keep on praying. We need you to step out of your car and give glory to this God that is so good to us. We need you to keep sowing into the church. We need to make sure we got to go down and, and pay the other half of this lot until we can get in there. We need to keep up and keep on keeping on. We need to do that together in unity. And I tell you what, we need to make sure that we're praying when people say that they pray and that we're reaching our hands out and we walk around and make sure that we give praise whenever praise is due because He is worthy of all that. And we need to keep that up. I tell you what, I wish I could look out and see my mom sitting over there. But you know what she's going to allow us to do? That if you will praise a little bit, if you will pray a little bit, if you would just give your love a little bit, then I can see my mom in all of you guys today. So I pray that we have a church for the first day in 2021, that we set a tone for the year coming up, that we're not going to be satisfied with the way it was, that we're going to say this is a new year, and we have a new opportunity, and we're going to seize that today. We're going to seize it today and make sure that we're doing it in all his goodness. Man, yeah, he's good. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work in his good pleasure. That's what it says in Philippians. Philippians 1 and 6, it says, I am sure of this. 
that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at that day of Jesus Christ. I'm asking you guys for the good work that you started to close out 2020 in my mom's honor that we continue it in 2021. I hope I said the right words. I hope I can show you that my heart of how thankful that we are. And I wish that you guys would just step out on faith for those that are lost and undone. I read something, oh, I don't know, we've been reading a lot. And you know, someone says, it's not a new way, it's not an old way, it's not a free will way, it's not a Methodist way, it's not just any way. He gave us a way, he said in the Bible, that I am the way, and I am the truth, and I am the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. So I say in the mighty name of Jesus that we just rebuke all the sickness in this land. And by the name of Jesus, we'll step out on faith and praise his holy name. And in the name of Jesus, that you will say no to sin and give your heart to Jesus Christ. What a testimony that you can leave in 2021. Hey everybody, we actually weren't prepared to really get out of the car, but this song is has been on some people's hearts and we just um, wanted to give glory to God this morning. God, I'm on my knees again. God, I'm begging, please again. I need you. Oh, I need you. Walking down this desert road, water for my thirsty soul. I need you. Oh, I need you. Your forgiveness. It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips Like the sound of a symphony to my ears Like holy water on my skin slave to sin I want to know about being born again I need you oh I need you take me to the riverside take me on and baptize I need you oh I need you your forgiveness is like sweet sweet sound of a symphony to my ears like holy water on my skin I don't want to abuse your grace God I need it every day it's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. 
When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Well, shame no longer has a place to hide. And I am not a captive to the light. I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. Oh, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your 
Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. My story isn't over. My story's just begun. A failure won't define me, because that's what my father does. Listen to that. This failure won't define me, because that's what my father does. Ooh, lay your burdens down Ooh, here in the Father's house Check your shame at the door Cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the Father's house Father 
this house now. And arrival's not the end game. The journey is where you are. You never wanted perfect. You just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over if the story isn't good. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Oh, oh, lay your burdens down. Oh, oh, here in the Father's house, check your shame at the door. Cause it ain't welcome anymore. Oh, oh, Prodigals come home, the helpless find home. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Prison doors fling wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. The Jericho walls are squaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Whoa, whoa. shame at the door cause it ain't welcome anymore whoa, whoa, whoa. you're in the Father's been held by the Savior. I felt fire from above. I've been down to the river. I ain't the same. A prodigal return. Bye. 
the blood There's a kind of thing That just breaks a man Breaks him on down to his knee God, I've been broken more than a time or two Yes, I have That's when he picked me up And he showed me what it means to be a man Come on and say All my hope is in Jesus
because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know And life is worth the living just because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know He holds the future, and life is worth the living just because He Amen. If you enjoyed that, give a nice horn blow. Amen. Amen. Because he lives, I can live also. You think about that for a minute. Just a minute. He could still be in the tomb, but he rose on that third and appointed morning for you and I. Uh, and without that, it would have just been a death. Uh, the things that we would be doing would be in vain. But because he lives, you and I can live also. Boy, that excites me today. I'm going to... I woke up this morning getting ready for church, and, and for some reason, uh, Brother Jamie Bartley's name just come, kept coming back to me the whole prayer. So I'm going to go ahead and call him uh, to ask prayer over the service and, uh, and the Word of God. Uh, so, Brother Jamie, would you come on forward? Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just thank you for this day and this time, Lord. We just thank you for gathering us together again, Lord. Lord, we just pray a blessing on the man that's going to bring the message, Lord. We just pray that you'll just bless the message, Lord, that it'll reach those that it needs to reach, Lord. It'll bring peace to those that need peace, Lord, and comfort to those that need comfort, Lord. Lord, that it'll bring salvation to those that's looking for a Savior this morning, Lord. We just thank you and praise you for all things, Lord. We just want to give you honor and glory, Lord. We just thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be much in prayer for Brother Brian as he comes to break the bread of life. Well, I, I don't plan to be in your presence long. I can tell you this. Uh, Brother Eric is the one who's going to be bringing the message today. But I do have a couple of scriptures and some thoughts that I wanted to, to share with you. And uh, how many of you all start the new year wanting to do better. Anybody like me in that? I, I want to do better. Uh, so one thing that I had, had really had on my heart is to be a scripture reader and, and one that, that takes it seriously and, and reads it. Uh, you know, I think it's very important for us as Christians to know what God says. How about that? Do, can we agree on that? That it's important to know what God wants from us, what He wants to tell us, what He wants us to do with our lives. And so I, I think that, that as we read Scripture, that's what we're going to find out. And I can tell you in the book of Psalms, the very first ch chapter of Psalms, the first words tell us a lot. And I think that introductions matter. I think that the way that we conduct ourselves when we begin relationships matter. So let's look at Psalms 1 
And then, like I said, I have a thought that I wanted to share that I shared with Brother Jason just a little while ago. And, uh, and it's something that I think will really, really uh, be uh, an important thought for us to, to hold on to this week and, and as we go about this year. So uh, as I do that, let, let's, uh, let's read Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's the word of God. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Listen to this. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season. And his leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doth, shall prosper listen to this now this is what happens if you don't allow god's word to manifest itself inside of you and begin to change you listen it says the ungodly are not so but are like the chafe which the wind drives away therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous but listen if we allow god to do the work and we Join him for what he wants to accomplish. Verse 6 tells us exactly what he, he will do. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So we need to understand that if we want to know what to do, how to conduct ourselves, where to go, who to talk to, who to be uh, witnessing to, who to make sure that, that hears the message of the Lord, we better be in the Word. We better make sure that the Word has a standing inside of our lives. So first and foremost, before anything else is said for this year at Caney Creek Free Will Baptist Church, let's get in the Word. Let's make sure the Word is written on our hearts because I can tell you the thing that matters the most is what you do with Jesus. You know who Jesus is to us right now? He is the Word. We need to make sure that the Word is alive in us. That's how Jesus can move inside of our lives, is allowing him to speak to our hearts through God's word. Now, I told Brother Jason something just before service, and I, I hope he doesn't mind if I share it. You know, we were talking about Sister Barb and how much we love her, and I was thinking about how uh, uh, Pastor Billy Graham had, had some really amazing words on, on the death of a saint. You know, he stated that one day, this was before he passed, that there will be a headline that reads, Billy Graham has died, but don't believe it. Because at that moment, I'll never be more alive than what I am right then. So friends, I can tell you this, as we are here gathered, if you want to be able to have that same testimony that Sister Barb has had, Glenn, I know you know what I'm talking about. Jason, Shannon, I know you know what I'm saying. If you want to be able to have the testimony that says, I've never been more alive, then you need to, to take God's Word seriously. You need to communicate with Him daily. I know our sister was a prayer warrior. I know she prayed for me. And I know that she prayed for many in this uh, in, in under the hearing of my voice right now. So I want to tell you something. If you want to, if you want to communicate with God, if you want to want to be a part of His family, you better talk to Him, and you better allow Him to talk to you. I can tell you this: if if my daughters or my wife never talked to me, I wouldn't I wouldn't think they loved me very much. But they talk to me all the time, and so I know that they love me. Don't you want your Father in heaven? to feel that same way about you? Don't you want Him to know that you love Him? I, am I by myself in this? I hope I'm not. I want God to, to know above everything else that every fiber of my being loves Him. So friends, let's make sure that we are communicating with Him and He's communicating with us. I want to share one last scripture. It's Hebrews chapter 4. In Hebrews chapter 4, Verse 16, 
it tells us what can happen if we allow God to have full reign inside of our life. When we allow Him to have every part of our being, this is where we can, we can obtain mercy. We can find grace to help. Not, not in, in the time when it's, when it's convenient, not in the time when I'm prospering, but at my most desperate need. In my time of need, you can have it. Friends, I hope you know that when we allow God to speak to our hearts through His Word, when we praise Him and when we pray to Him, He hears us. How many of you all know that? God wants you to talk to Him. But more than that, He wants to talk to you. Friends, let's make it a commitment this year to be inside of His Word and be in prayer one for another and not just for that, for yourselves. Because we can have the, the blessings of God. I can tell you this. God wants to bless you. How do I know that? I know it because He's blessed me. And this is not a prosperity message. He's not, I'm not saying He's going to give you a million dollars or the car you want or the house you want. He's going to take care of your needs. He's going to make sure you got food on your table. He's going to make sure you got a roof over your head. He's going to make sure that you have the sustenance that gives you life, not just here on earth, but for eternity. Amen. Friends, friends, I, I implore you, Let's make sure that this word is getting written on our hearts. As I, as I read it more, I want to read it more. Can I get an amen? If you understand, honk your horn. As I read it more, I want to read it more because it's the word of life. I love you all. Let's be in our Bibles this year because that's where life is. God bless you. Come on, brother. Praise the Lord. You know, this morning I got up early uh, reading God's Word, and I got to thinking about uh, all the excuses we have not to serve God. And uh, got to thinking about how we always say, man, that, that could have been a service if we would have come unhinged, you know. Uh, I feel like this service would have been good if somebody that broke loose started running. Uh, I think that this service would be even better if somebody started raising their hands and praising the Lord. Maybe this service would have been great if somebody would have shouted instead of holding back. And they said, well, I'm in a, I'm in a vehicle. Uh, you can't hear me. Well, crack your window just a little bit and let you shout out. Amen? The thing is, is when we come to serve God, we come to serve Him with a fervency. Anything else would be hypocrisy because it would be lukewarm. So be ye either hot or cold. Let God be the Lord of your life, or go to the bar, go visit the people you used to run with, and go on. So that's pretty hard. Yeah, it is. But you ain't going to gain nothing by playing church. We need to be the church. And the way we can be the church is minding the Lord. I mourn for my sister, Barb, but I can tell you this. You don't look among the dead for the living. Because she had Christ on her state, she's in heaven because it's said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I'm going to tell you this, uh, we need to start doing more of that as we should be mourning at birth and we should be shouting them out when they go. And I, hey, when I die, you better shout me out. Preach about eight or ten preachers. Sing all kinds of songs. Uh, tear their heart out if you need to. But I'm going to tell you this, if God is drawing you this morning, you need to come and let Him have His way in your life. Uh, Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? Down on Psalms 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in Him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song will I praise Him. You feel like shouting this morning? Shout! Praise God. The Lord is their strength, and He is the saving strength of His anointed. Save thy people and bless thy inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. We ain't got a God that's just a God sometimes. He's a God all the time. He is the God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, we need to start acting a little more like it. 
If you've been mourning over somebody for 15 or 20 years, it's time you let that go and let God have His way in your life. Start telling them about where they're at and what's going on. I said about how much you miss them because I'm going to tell you something. Every one of us is going to lead by the way of the grave or by the way of the sky, one way or the other. But the thing is, we're going to mourn here for a little, but we're going to shout and know that God has got them right in His bosom and the Father of Abraham in paradise. I want you to know this, uh, that there is hope beyond the grave, praise God. If they wasn't, I wouldn't be up there preaching this morning. I'm going to tell you there's hope in Jesus and there's hope out of this world. There's a hope in the world to come. If we had only the hope of this place, like Paul said, of this world, of Jesus in it, and not the one of Him to come, I'll be among all men most miserable. But I have a hope that passes, oh, it gives me a peace that passes all understanding. Don't you know the Bible says greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Don't you know that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, but we've got to let Him have His way in our life. Can I get a witness? Woo! Praise the Lord. I'm going one more place. Isaiah chapter 40. It says comfort for God's people. It's a comforting thing. It starts bragging on God. Start telling things God had done. I'm going to just pick out one here. Verse 12. Who have measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, meted out heaven with a span, <laughs> and the compre- comprehension hindered the dust of the earth in a measure, and he weighed the mountains in scales. That's God. And the hills in a balance. Everything you see, he just weighed it out, figured out what he wanted to do in his hand, and just started, man, I tell you, started dealing it out, glory to God. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arms and he shall carry them in his bosom. That's our God. Behold your God. Listen to this. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Hey, it'll stand when the world's on fire. This is only temporary. We're peculiar wayfaring strangers. We're just going through this place. We ain't going to live here forever. We're going to live forever in heaven. I keep reminding you that of the temporary state of man. This old boy going to pass away someday from here. But I've made preparations. Shout me out, please, praise God. And know this, that one way or the other, the Lord's going to come and see me or I'm going to go see him. But the thing is, is he loves you more than you'll ever know. And he's there for you when you have trouble. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. And know this, that if you let God have His way in your life, He'll take away that anxiety. He'll take away a lot of them things. He can even take away your sickness if you're willing to lay it down. Listen to me. Let Him have His way in your life. I can't control all these things. I can lay hands on somebody and pray, but if God don't heal them, I ain't got no power in this body. But I can tell you this, but the power is in being obedient to the Spirit of God. And if you're obedient to the Spirit, the Lord tells you to be anointed, you be anointed. If the Lord tells you to pray for somebody, you pray for them. If God tells you to run, you run. If He tells you to shout, you shout. You say, I'm in this thing a long time. I'm getting too old. Well, call somebody and say, well, glory to God. If you can't run over there, call them and tell them. Amen. Check on your brothers and sisters in this trying times. Uh, COVID's going to pass. Wait and see. And when it does, we'll go in this church and be like that you put on Facebook, brother. We'll be doing backflips and everything else because we're so excited about what God's doing. Don't ever take church for granted. That's probably the reason we've been outside in this weather and hit rain and all that. God's trying to teach us a good lesson is that you didn't want to praise me when you was in the house, so I'm going to put you outside. See if you praise me then. I'm going to praise him where I'm outside, where I'm inside. So, whoo! Oh, if I'm on the right side or the left side, I'm just going to praise him. Whoo! Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You do. I've sat in service before and said, I wish they'd hurry up. I'd like to go and eat. i got to go see somebody. got to do this. got to do that. You know, when you like that, you ain't no earthly good whatsoever. You ain't nothing spiritual either. You're just sitting there in a lukewarm state trying to get out of church. Anybody need to go, go ahead and go, praise the Lord. But I can tell you this. Uh, if you be hot for God and you let God into your heart and that fire starts, but I'm talking about the Holy Ghost, when I, and don't be afraid of the Holy Ghost, amen? Let's start this new year out letting the Holy Ghost do what He need to do. Don't get excited deacons don't get excited it's all right uh, the holy ghost uh, it's just something that listen sir holy ghost come down and fill us up inside help us lord to lead help us lord to walk and do what we're supposed to do because without him you can't do nothing Whew. Ah, oh, here's the little part right here i'm gonna get to the good part and then we're going on i'm not rushing i i'm not a long-winded preacher 
I don't have to say a whole lot. I figure the Spirit can speak through what I'm saying. It'll go on forever. His Word, He'll accomplish that into which He has sent it to, and it will save that that needs to be saved. It'll condemn that that needs to be condemned. It, and that's the way it is. It'll heal that that needs to be healed. Uh, it'll sever that that needs to be severed. That's the Word of God. That's the Spirit of God. Trust God's Word and trust what God is doing in your life. See, I've sang for years. Good. Keep on singing. I preach for years. Keep on preaching. Praise the Lord. Stand on the rock and be ready. For in an hour you think not the Son of Man cometh. It's easy to get down. But we're in a new year, and I want to see a new you. I want to see somebody that ain't complaining. Let's close that adult daycare. Let's just close it, praise God. Let's start taking care of each other and others instead of wanting somebody to take care of us all the time. It's the truth, and you know it. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray that God will strengthen us. Every time that I start trying to get down, I pray that God will strengthen me that I can rise above it. I pray that He'll strengthen you so that before long, every time I've got a headache, praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I, I got laid off. Glory to God, I can go to church more. Come on now, be with me on this thing. Hey, it ain't being complacent. It ain't being crazy. I'm just telling you, the world don't control what goes on inside of you, what the Spirit does in you, and God does in you. He can do a lot of things. I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but you've got to be willing to let God strengthen you. He'll strengthen you in a way that these things won't affect you as much. Let go of the things that need to let go of. Listen, if you're mourning for somebody and you're having a hard time, listen, if they're with Jesus, don't worry about it. Listen, just be strengthening yourself knowing that when I get there, that's going to be the huggingest time you've ever seen. Well, that day when the reunion day comes, when old reunion comes, and oh, glory to God, when he calls us all home, we'll be known as we're known. And we'll be there down by that river with, with that brother David, King David, and he'll play in that harp. And we'll be down by the river singing a song the angels can't sing. Well, glory, I don't know about you, but it makes me excited. Okay, I'm going to read to you this, and I want you to sink this in real good. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? He's not fainted. He's not asleep. Are you with me on this? <laughs> the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not. Neither is weary. He don't get tired. He don't get tired, praise the Lord. There is no searching of his understanding, so quit trying to figure him out. He's just figuring you out, and you need to yield yourself to him. It says, he giveth power to the faint. I can use some of that power. What about you? And to them that have no might, he increases strength. He'll strengthen you if you'll let him. Even thy youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. And here's my favorite thing ever was. He says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and shall mount up with wings as eagles. Can you get a picture in your mind? Spread your wings just a little bit, glory to God. <laughs> Woo! They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There is no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, the Bible says. You've got to be willing to let God have His way in your life. This ain't no thing where we get up here and shout and holler, go on, try to get you pumped up. You ought to be pumped up before you got here. You ought to be in God's Word and ready to run before you ever hit this bottom. And when we get in the house, the God's Word in you is like a fire shut up in your bones, praise God. And you just got to let it run. Let it run, children. Are you with me today? Say, so he's all fired up. I've been fired up for a long time. Sometimes we just repress the fire and you hold it down. You know what happens when you do that? It's like a steam engine. You compress it. That water ain't nothing. And that fire ain't nothing until you compress it and you put it under pressure and all of a sudden it starts a boiling. And all of a sudden it's like, whoo, whoo, glory to God. And that's what happens when a preacher, he just comes out, he can't help it. And I want you to know this. Let God start a little fire. And you got that drink of the living water. So let it start making a little steam. Let it see that vapor. Not that it's your life passed away, but it's a vapor coming. Let it start, pay, let the steam start rolling, praise God. Watch the smoke come from the fire. And you know, they went by smoke during the day and fire by night. Well, right now we can go with the Holy Spirit and it's on fire every day. 
And that's what it's about. Reach and get a hold of the fire. It won't hurt you. It won't burn you. Praise God. He'll fill you up inside and He'll give you a want to. And He'll give you something to do. He'll give you something to want to do. And you won't be looking at your brothers and sisters. You'll just be looking at yourself. Don't worry about nobody else. Worry about you. Clean up this house and the rest of them you won't even worry about. It's all good if you'll just let God have His way. Amen? All right. Is anybody mad at me? Okay, one. Well, that ain't too bad. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo! Glory! That's what it's all about. Listen to me. Don't let nobody step on your toes. Pull your toes back, and if you pull them back far enough, you'll fall on your knees. Once you get on your knees, start praying for them. Next thing you know, you're all down on your knees praying. Listen, if we'll humble ourselves before the Lord, and we'd ask Him to come into our lives the way we need to, and we would serve Him with a purpose the way we ought to, we would see things happen the way they should. The, thing, the reason things ain't like they're supposed to be because we ain't doing what we're supposed to do. And they, and they say, well, hey, we got a nice building. The Lord has blessed us with it. But it ain't nothing without the people in it. Praise God. But when you get the people filled in there, the church goes in the building. The building ain't the church. That, oh, praise God. And when you get that Holy Ghost down in you, hey, we'll have a good place to worship, but we won't seal it full. All right, maybe we have to build on. Oh, oh. <laughs> praise the Lord. Listen to me. Let God have His way in your life. Let Him have His way. We're going to get a song here in a moment. I'm not long-winded. I believe God can save you if you just know that Jesus Christ is Son of God and God had raised Him from the dead. And if you believe that He, that he rose on that third appointed morning, if you would confess, because it's out of the heart, Confession come. It comes up from there. In the heart you believe if under righteousness when the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, if you believe that you ain't where you need to be with God, if you know that you need something more, today would be the day of more. I'm telling you, my God is more than you would ever know. You can't think or imagine what all He can do for you if you'll just let Him. Praise God. Start praying for these other churches. I want to see revival everywhere. But revival happens. You can't just schedule it. It starts in the heart and the fire and it rolls out. And when it does, it just keeps rolling. It keeps going everywhere. You can't, everybody goes and sets the time and says, let's have revival. Well, that's good. It's good to plan things. But some, I've been to some that wasn't a revival. It was more like a funeral. But I can tell you this, but if you let God, let the Holy Spirit do the revival, let things come alive and let people start. When your people are ready to run and shout every time you see them and they don't know what to do, they're ready to have church and can't stand it, don't want to leave when it's time to go, want to stand around and talk a little longer, want to sing seven or eight songs instead of two or three, then you start seeing people that's seeking God and looking for something more than themselves. I love you. I hope I ain't made you mad. Off the word of God, I will not apologize. But off my ignorance, I would. So you come to me and we'll decide which one it is. Amen. But I love you. I praise God for you. We'll